California is undoubtedly one of the most recognized states in the United States, thanks largely to its powerful economy, an economic force that rivals entire countries. But even as California sits at the top of the rankings for financial strength, it faces a persistent threat. Erosion This natural process eats away at the state in many different forms. Coastal erosion constantly nibbles away at California's famous shoreline. Inland reckless farming practices have caused the loss of precious topsoil, stripping the land and leaving it vulnerable. And perhaps most unsettling is how erosion in the hills is practically expected. That's because wildfires are a regular part of life in California, turning green slopes into ash and leaving the earth exposed and fragile. With nothing left to hold the soil in place, entire sections of hillsides can collapse after a storm, crushing everything in their path and sometimes even taking lives. Surprisingly, one of the best defenses against this kind of erosion is something simple. Dead vegetation. Yes, layers of dead plants can help stop the soil from washing away, but how exactly does this work? First, consider California's complicated relationship with rain. The state is infamous for its unpredictable and often extreme weather. When it finally rains after long dry spells, it's not a gentle shower. It's a deluge. Locals know that a downpour means trouble is on the way because so much water falls in such a short time. Take, for example, the series of storms that hit from the end of 2022 to early 2023. In just a few short months, intense rains left 22 people dead. Power went out for 200,000 homes, and 6,000 people had to leave everything behind and evacuate. The damage was so widespread it was hard to even measure. It's nearly impossible to measure the full extent of the destruction. The damage was simply too widespread even if it didn't rise to the level of a historic disaster. What makes the situation even more heartbreaking is the knowledge that things weren't always like this. Experts have concluded that California has entered a new era of prolonged droughts, with increasingly longer gaps between periods of rainfall. When the rain finally comes, it arrives in short, intense bursts that only make matters worse. And according to climatologists, this is only the beginning. They say droughts will continue to stretch out, growing longer and harsher, while the rain that does fall will be more intense and short-lived. But floods aren't the only concern. Wildfires are an ever-present threat as well. Most people will remember the catastrophic fire in January 2025 that swept across the greater Los Angeles area and beyond. That blaze alone damaged more than 10,000 structures, forced 180,000 residents to evacuate, and racked up more than $250 billion in damage. As devastating as it was, it's far from the only fire that has left a mark on the state. Since the turn of the century, California's annual burn area has swung from 89,000 acres to an astonishing 1.6 million acres, sometimes nearly 2% of the state's entire land area. The 2020 wildfire season was especially grim, with over 8,100 fires scorching more than 4.4 million acres in a single year. Today, more than 350,000 people live in cities that sit entirely within zones of extreme fire danger. An additional 2.7 million live in areas classified as very high hazard zones, even if those zones are spread out or slightly less exposed. If you remove people from the equation and look at the land itself, the pattern is clear. The same climate extremes that fuel the floods also feed the fires. The relentless combination of low humidity, high temperatures, long dry spells, and powerful winds turns the state's forests and hillsides into tinderboxes. That's the stark reality. Fire and floods, two forces of destruction sharing the same vulnerable terrain. It's a cycle that's becoming harder to break, and one that California is now forced to face head-on. That's a significant problem, especially when you consider how erosion affects California's hillsides. The U.S. Geological Survey has tracked a tenfold increase in hillside erosion following wildfires in Northern California from the late 1980s to the 2010s. These events have made soil erosion more frequent and much more damaging. Roads, homes, and other vital infrastructure are often in the path of this moving soil. 
Tragically, it also poses a danger to people and wildlife. And it's not just erosion that's the problem. Once the soil is stripped of vegetation, heavy rain can make the situation even worse. Without plants or topsoil to hold the water back, rainwater flows downhill unchecked, carrying loose earth and debris with it. This is especially dangerous in California where heavy rainstorms, though rare, can be very intense. A prime example is the 2014 King Fire in El Dorado County, near the edge of the National Forest. The blaze destroyed nearly 99,000 acres, most of it on steep hillsides. One of the main routes into the forest, Eleven Pines Road, was threatened, as were the Brush Creek and Slab Creek Reservoirs, key parts of the S-MUD hydroelectric system that powers much of the Sierra Nevada region. Officials were also worried that runoff from the burned hills would clog drainage pipes and pollute streams and reservoirs, potentially affecting drinking water. Faced with these challenges, the U.S. Forest Service, supported by soil scientists, botanists, and hydrologists, decided not to wait for the rains to make things worse. They quickly identified 1,200 acres of forest that needed immediate help. They worked out a plan and settled on an unusual but proven solution using dead plants, specifically straw. They turned to large bales of certified rice straw, free of weeds and a byproduct of rice farming. The straw was shredded into fine pieces to make mulch, ready to be spread across the scorched earth. To get the job done quickly and safely, helicopters were brought in. Flying over the rugged landscape, they were able to drop the straw exactly where it was needed. Helicopters made it possible to cover the steep hills efficiently without the risk of disturbing delicate areas on the ground. In practice, the processed straw was loaded into nets carried by two medium-sized helicopters. These aircraft flew repeatedly over the steep, charred hillsides, some with slopes as steep as 60%, transforming once lush green forests into a patchwork of yellow straw-covered ground. Each load of straw was enough to cover nearly an acre with a ton of mulch, and each trip took just four minutes. In the end, they couldn't reach every corner of the designated area, but they successfully treated 320 acres. You might be wondering, why straw? How can dead plant material protect against something as powerful as erosion? The U.S. Forest Service didn't choose this method lightly. Let's break it down. Every healthy plant anchors itself in the ground with a network of roots that hold the soil together. When a wildfire sweeps through, the flames don't just burn the plants, they also destroy the entire top layer of soil. This layer is full of fungi, bacteria, and organic matter that keep the ground stable and able to soak up water. Once the fire is over, the next rainstorm becomes a real threat. California's short, heavy rains can wash away soil that no longer has roots to hold it in place. Without that stabilizing network, hillsides can start to crumble, sending mud and debris rushing downhill. The burned soil can even become crusty and water-resistant, turning rainfall into fast-moving streams that cause flooding and further destruction. This is where straw mulch comes in. While it's not as effective as a living forest floor, it still plays a crucial role in slowing down the flow of water. The straw acts like a thin, protective blanket, absorbing some of the rain's impact and reducing how quickly water runs across the bare ground. This slows the formation of mudslides and helps prevent chunks of soil from breaking free. Straw mulch also cushions the blow of rainfall, which reduces erosion from the topsoil. Though there aren't precise figures showing exactly how well this worked in the aftermath of the King Fire, there were no reports of damage to roads or infrastructure in the areas they protected. It appears the straw did its job, at least for that storm season, helping California dodge another round of destruction. Here's the thing. There's actually some pretty solid evidence that straw mulch really works. In Spain, a couple of years back, researchers looked at how the burned-out hills did with and without mulch. Turns out the ground with straw held on to more water while the bare areas just dried up fast. When they managed to cover over 80% of the burned ground, erosion dropped by close to 90%. Even when they only covered about two-thirds, erosion still went down by 70 to 75%. It's kind of amazing how something as simple as straw can make that much of a difference. California saw the same thing after the King Fire. It wasn't just about stopping the dirt from washing away. The straw also helped the ground hang on to the rainwater, 
which is a huge deal in a place that goes months without a drop sometimes. And it gets even better. Over time, the straw itself starts to break down, almost like a slow-release snack for the soil. It feeds the ground and makes it easier for little plants to pop up again. In a place like California, that extra boost is a big deal because the land is already fighting against the heat and dryness. So yeah, it's more than just throwing some straw around. It's about giving the land a little help so it can come back to life. Another benefit of using straw mulch is that it can help keep weeds at bay. Gardeners have long known that a layer of straw can stop weeds from taking over. That's especially important in forests after a fire, when native plants are struggling to regrow in tough conditions. It's worth noting that this idea of using mulch to fight erosion isn't something new for California. It's a proven technique that's been used in other states, too. For example, after the huge Cameron Peak fire in Colorado in 2020, this approach was put to the test again. The fire scorched nearly 210,000 acres in the Arapaho and Roosevelt National Forests, as well as parts of the Rocky Mountain National Park. The scene was much like what California faces, scorching temperatures, bone-dry air, rugged mountain slopes, and fierce winds. Researchers knew what would happen next. The soil's top layer would be stripped away by the rain, and all that loose dirt and debris would rush downhill. In that Colorado fire zone, more than 990 miles of rivers, including the Poudre and Big Thompson, ran right through the burned areas, making them extremely vulnerable. It didn't take long for the aftermath to show. By summer 2021, those rivers were choked with sediment. Roads washed out. Sudden floods and mudslides became common. The Poudre River itself turned black with ash, soot, and the remains of burned trees. In July that year, flash floods hit hard in Larimer County, sweeping away a couple of buildings and leaving several people in harm's way. Some residents were forced to evacuate to safer ground. Clearly, action was needed. Helicopters were called in to drop straw over the fire-scorched slopes. Crews focused on the most vulnerable areas over 10,000 acres in the Poudre River watershed and another 1,480 acres in the Big Thompson River watershed were set aside for this work. These spots were particularly dangerous because of the pollution and runoff they were causing. It's interesting to note that the mulch wasn't just rice straw from farms. Shredded wood was also used to add strength and variety to the mix. Overall, the project was seen as a practical way to reduce erosion and protect the rivers below but it came with a significant price tag. One helicopter flight, covering just 2.4 acres, cost between $5,000 and $6,000. When you added up all the flights and materials needed to treat 10,800 acres, the final bill came to around $31 million. Beyond the helicopter mulching, crews also set up straw barriers to help control erosion as the land recovered from the Cameron Peak fire. These barriers, made from tightly rolled straw or wood fibers, are wrapped in mesh to hold them together. Though they're bulky, they're surprisingly lightweight because of the straw inside. That makes them easier to carry and set up along hillsides where the risk of erosion is high. The idea behind these barriers is straightforward. They're laid along the natural contours of the slopes, slowing down water as it runs downhill and catching soil and debris before it can wash away. The barriers let water pass through while holding back the sediment that would otherwise clog streams and damage pipes. Still, they aren't a perfect solution. Recent studies have shown that these barriers don't hold up as well when the rain comes down hard. In those situations, the weight of water and debris can overwhelm them or previous erosion can reduce their holding power. In short, while they help slow erosion, they're not foolproof especially when facing the kinds of storms that follow in the wake of major fires. Additionally, if these barriers aren't built and installed properly, they can actually make erosion worse by channeling water downhill, creating bigger runoff problems where the slope flattens out. Overall, it's not always the best choice, especially in places like California, where intense rainstorms are a regular part of life. Still, when the situation is right, these straw barriers are put to work like they were in Colorado, where they were actively set up on fire-damaged slopes. Using logs for erosion control is a much tougher job. Logs are obviously a lot heavier than straw, but they're still used on slopes that have been moderately or severely burned, especially when those hills are steep. 
with slopes ranging from 20 to 60 percent. Just like with straw barriers, the logs are positioned carefully along the hillside contours. But logs come with an added challenge. They can roll away if they're not secured. So, crews partially bury them in the soil to keep them in place. These log barriers work similarly to straw barriers, slowing down water and helping to catch soil. Studies have shown they can reduce water runoff, but only during lighter rains. When the rain really pours, their ability to hold back erosion drops off quickly, so experts don't consider them a reliable option for the biggest storms. Another approach to stopping erosion is simply planting new life. Scattering seeds over burned ground is a straightforward idea. Typically, non-reproducing annual plants are chosen because they won't take over the local ecosystem or crowd out native species. The seeds are usually just spread over the scorched land, sometimes from aircraft or even drones, especially in rugged areas that are hard to reach on foot. This method was once very common, particularly in the U.S. during the 1970s and 1980s, when up to 75% of treated burned areas were reseeded this way. Today, though, it's far less popular. Researchers found that many of these seeds didn't survive their first year after a fire, leaving the hillsides exposed again. Plus, there's the worry that seeding might accidentally introduce plants that don't belong there, messing with the natural recovery of the forest. By the 2000s, only about 30% of treated areas used seeding anymore. When you weigh all these options, straw mulch still stands out as the most effective method for immediate protection. But no single method is perfect. Protecting burned hillsides from erosion takes a mix of strategies, each one suited to the land and conditions at hand. After a fire, the threat of erosion is just too complex and too serious to be solved by any one solution alone.